dear students though there are various kinds of diseases which are prevalent in fishes which are being cultured in semi intensive and intensive conditions there are various viral diseases bacterial diseases diseases caused by fungus helminth crustaceans then there are various nutritional diseases also found in fishes besides the miscellaneous diseases but today in this lecture we shall be dealing with the viral fish diseases wherein we shall be talking about ipn that is infectious pancreatic necrosis we shall be talking about ihn that is infectious hemopoietic necrosis we shall be talking about vhs that is viral hemorrhagic septicemia we shall be talking about svc that is spring viremia of carps we shall be talking about the ccvd that is channel catfish viral diseases then we shall be talking about the carp pox we shall be talking about the lymphocystis and various other diseases before proceeding it is my request to you all to like and subscribe my channel biolearnia so today we shall be mainly focusing on the viral fish diseases when we talk about these very viruses that the diseases what kind of diseases are caused by these viruses in fishes we should be knowing that what a virus is what are the characteristic features of the virus so first of all we shall be dealing with the nature and characteristic feature of the viruses when we talk about the virus we say virus is a sub microscopic infectious agent that replicates only inside the living cells of an organism so when we talk about these very viruses one of the most important characteristic feature is that they are sub microscopic and they have the property of replication but only inside the living cells of an organism these virus infect all the life forms from the animals and plants and even microbes are infected by these viruses such as bacteria and archaea when we talk about these viruses these are the smallest group of organisms these are the smallest group of the organisms with simple structure of nucleic acid genome so they have a structure which is very simple made up of the nucleic acid genome and covered by a protein coat and it characteristically differs from the rest of the prokaryotes in three ways now we came to know viruses they are the smallest group of organisms they have a simple structure of nucleic acid genome covered by protein coat they are different from the other organisms in three aspects the first they have a very small size ranging from 18 to 300 nanometer so their size ranges from 18 to 300 nanometer they are metabolically inert particles and what does it mean it means that they are just like non living organisms when they are outside the living cell they can carry out the biological function or replication only inside a living entity or living cells so that is why many a times we also call viruses as the link between the non living and the living creatures and the third important thing this was the first one this is second one third important thing is that they have only one type of nucleic acid that is either they are made up of rna or they are made up of dna let us have a little bit of idea about how viruses are classified just we will be having a little bit of brush up so viruses are basically classified 
on the type of the nucle nucleic acid they possess. They may be either DNA viruses, there may be either RNA viruses. It means that the, the organisms, the viruses which have DNA as their um, this uh, her heredity material or nucleic acid or deoxyribose as their nucleic acid, we, are, we call them as the DNA viruses and which have only ribose nucleic acid as their um, nucleic acid, we call it them as the RNA virus. So, viruses are classified basically on the type of the nucleic acid and that is based on the nucleic acid they possess. If they possess DNA, we call them as the DNA viruses. If they possess RNA, we call them as the RNA viruses. And apart from these nucleic acid, the nature of the nucleic acid in terms of various factors are taken into account. For example, strandedness, whether they are single stranded or double stranded. So we call them as a single stranded viruses or we can call them as the double stranded viruses and this helps in their classification. Now, what kind of segmentation they have? That is whether they are segmented, they are having the segmented genome or non-segmented genome. What kind of polarity do they have? Positive or negative polarity of their RNA genome. So that is why on the basis of this um, polarity of the RNA, RNA genome, we also classify the, um, the um, viruses. Whether they are linear or circular, what is their molecular mass? How many number of the open reading frames are present in them? And the presence or absence of the lipid bilayer envelope on the basis of symmetry. So on the basis of the symmetry of the capsomeres, size and density of the virus particles, they are also classified on this basis as well. Now they are also classified on the basis of the number of the proteins and the type of antigens and the viral enzymes. That is how many types of the proteins, how many numbers of the proteins and what kind of antigens and the viral enzymes are present in them on the basis of this very characteristic feature they are also classified. Then they are also classified on the basis of the geographic distribution and the host range. That is whether they are limited to a particular host or they have a broad nature of infection. On the basis of this they are also classified. So, they can be classified on the basis of all these very things and these include the classification of the viruses. Now, based on the presence of envelope, they can be classified into enveloped or unenveloped viruses and if we try to classify on the basis of the shape, Shape of the viruses depend on the nature of the arrangement of the nucleic acid and capsomeres. And if arranged to form an icosahedron with 20 equilateral triangles, triangular surfaces, it is referred to as icosahedral symmetry. So we do have, do have the different modes of the classification of these viruses based on the different criteria. And if the nature of the arrangement is helix, it is called as helical symmetry. Some viruses are also without any specific symmetry, which is referred to as the complex symmetry. So there are various, uh, various criteria on the basis of which the um, viruses are classified. Now let us have a little bit of uh, idea what we are going to study in this very lecture. What are the important viral diseases of the freshwater fishes? There are about 50 fish diseases that are regarded to be as the, um, as the viral in origin. And 75% of these diseases affect freshwater fishes and 25% affect the marine fishes. <clears throat> so, 50 fish diseases are regarded to be as the viral in origin. Out of which 75% infect freshwater fishes and 25% uh, affect the marine fishes. Now, what kind of the what kinds of the virus infect the fish? To which family they belong? So, mostly the, these very viruses which infect the fish they belong to these families such as double-stranded palated virus, 
belonging to family herpes viridi they can be double stranded necked virus belonging to irido viridi and adeno viridi and if they are single stranded necked rna necked we they belong to calici viridi if they are single stranded rna palatid they belong to rhabdo viridi or and or ortho mixo viridi and if they are double stranded necked they can be um, they can belong to birna viridi and rio viridi so we do have the different families which have the capability to infect the fish they are herpes viridi irido viridi adeno viridi calci viridi rhabdo viridi ortho mixo viridi birna viridi and rio viridi now let us let us move on to the important fish diseases caused by these viruses and first of all we shall be talking about the infectious pancreatic necrosis as the name indicates this infectious pancreatic necrosis is the necrosis of the pancreas of the fish and it is a viral infection of trout salmon and eels this is very important that this is the disease which is mostly caused in trout salmon and eels and it occurs as an acute disease in fingerlings of the trout so it occurs as an acute disease in the fingerlings of the trout and it belongs to birna viridi family now important things about this infectious pancreatic necrosis it is the infection of trout salmon and eel it is acute in case of the fingerlings of the trouts and this virus belongs to birna viridi family now what are the symptoms of this very disease pale pigmentation abdominal distension that is fish becomes pale somewhat pale abdomen is distended and hemorrhages what if we see at the anatomy we can find the hemorrhages in the ventral areas and the occurrence of the clear or milky mucus in the stomach and the anterior intestine is one of the important um, this characteristic feature or result of this disease as well so how do we diagnose this very virus simple it is it is isolated in cell culture and identification is done with the help of the serum neutralization test so isolation its cell culture and then identification is done with the help of the serum neutralization test using polyvalent anti ipn virus serum so with the help of the polyvalent anti ipn virus serum this is identified if we talk about the incubation period incubation what is the incubation period of this very disease we see that the incubation period is dependent on temperature so temperature plays an important role in the incubation of this very disease it ranges from 6 days at 12.5 degree centigrade so 6 days at 12.5 degree centigrade to several weeks at 4 degree centigrade and it is uh, it is transmitted from the parents to progeny through eggs we call it as the vertical transmission that is from the parents to offspring through the eggs through the gametes how this disease can be prevented it um, can be prevented by incubation of virus free eggs and the fish health inspection programs so only way to get rid of these very viral diseases is to is the prevention prevention is the only safest mode that we should not uh, use the uh, uh, the diseased eggs we should take utmost care to check before incubation that the eggs are disease free so the next disease is infectious hemopoietic necrosis which is known by the name of the ihn that is infectious hemopoietic necrosis ihn is an acute viral disease of trout so first important thing is that it is the acute, acute viral disease of trout fingerlings and salmon fry so 
it is acute disease of trout fingerlings and salmon fry that is it infects mostly the uh, the and the younger uh, ones of the trout and the salmon it is caused by bullet shaped virus second important thing is that it is caused by the bullet shaped virus and can be transmitted through the seminal fluids or infected eggs that is gametes and eating raw feed stuff can also result in the ihf and the symptoms what are the symptoms of this very disease dark coloration dark coloration weakness abdominal swelling pale gills pale gills are the signs of this very disease dark coloration weakness abdominal swelling pale gills are the signs of disease of this disease diagnosis again requires isolation and identification of the virus that is by culture and identification by neutralization tests by anti ihnv serum that is anti infectious hemo uh, hemopoietic necrosis uh, virus serum so diagnosis is by anti neutralization test incubation period of ihn is it is again temperature dependent it ranges from 5.5 days at 21 degree centigrade to about 16 days at 3 degree centigrade and prevention and control prevention is the only means of of the control because no drugs and chemicals are known and inspection through the virological sampling are necessary we should keep vigil on the eggs we should we should take utmost care to segregate infected eggs if we are having um, a little bit of uh, you can say um, guess uh, that this these eggs are having certain kind of the infection we should we should isolate these very eggs or we should not take the eggs from the infected parents third important viral disease is viral hemorrhagic septicemia which is called as vhs when we talk about this very vhs it is viral hemorrhagic septicemia it is an acute chronic viral disease of salmonids so salmonids when we talk about the salmonids we uh, and especially rainbow trout so rainbow trout is a sal belongs to the salmonidae so it is the acute uh, chronic viral disease of salmonids and it is called activated disease activated disease and it is also called by the bullet shaped rhabdo virus so bullet shaped rhabdo virus is the transmission uh, is the virus which is responsible for the viral hemorrhagic septicemia and it is transmitted by contact from the fish to fish in water now when we also try to know about the symptoms of this very disease dark coloration lethargic hemorrhages in thin sockets acute anemia of gills uh, acute anemia gills become pale in color and bleeding occurs in gills these are the common symptoms of this very disease that is dark coloration lethargic nature hemorrhages in uh, hemorrhages in thin uh, fish uh, um, sockets acute anemia gills become pale and um bleeding occurs in uh, gills the signs of excitability can also be seen including erratic sw swimming behavior similar to that of the trout which is su suffering from the whirling disease so these very symptoms are somewhat um just like similar to that of the whirling disease in the case of trout which is caused by the protozoan parasite that is myxosoma cerebralis um so the signs of excitability are also found in this very uh, disease and the diagnosis can be confirmed only by the isolation and serological identification of the virus in the cell culture system so incubation period it it appears to be about 6 days at 15 degree centigrade and 8 to 11 days in at 10 degree centigrade so it is 6 days at 15 degree centigrade and 8 to 11 days at about 10 degree centigrade so prevention and control it is only by means of the control but only we have to take the preventive measures 
Uh, there is no cure for this very disease. Healthy fish should be isolated uh, from the sources of the infection and the virus survives in water for more than 24 hours. So we should keep in mind that the virus survives in water for more than 24 hours. So we should isolate the fish and keep it in some other water source. The fourth important disease, viral disease, is infectious dropsy of the carp. It is also known by the name of the spring viremia of the carp. So it is infectious dropsy of the carp or spring viremia of the carp. This very disease was first uh, described by Shepard class in 1929 and it is, it is regarded as one of the most serious diseases of the common carp. In this very SVC, that is spring viremia of the carp, it is caused by rhabdovirus. So important thing is that it is caused by the rhabdovirus in silver carp and grass carp. And it can cause high mortality in carp when the water temperature rises 10 to 20 degrees centigrade in spring. <clears throat> so as the temperature rises during the spring, this very, this very virus causes huge mortality. So many times that is why it is called a spring viremia of the car because in the spring with the rise in temperature the mortality increases mostly in spring that is why it is also known by the name of the spring viremia of the car. The symptoms uh, when we talk about the symptoms of this very disease reduced movement, darkening of skin, bleeding of fins and uh, skin, eyes, gills, these are the major symptoms of this very disease that is reduced movement, darkening of the skin and bleeding in fins, skin, eyes and gills. Then protruding eyes that is the bulging eyes and anemia are also other important uh, symptoms of this very disease. Then how this very disease is diagnosed? Again isolation of the virus in the cell culture and by serum neutralization test, we can diagnose this very disease. Transmission of the virus takes place through the eggs or sperm. It enters fish through gills. So mode of the transmission is through the eggs or the sperm and the, the entry, entry of this virus takes place by the gills. Prevention. Uh, prevention by vaccination. And the small farms fed well uh, with well spring or borehole bore water can be disinfected and kept free from the SVC. So prevention uh, is the um, prevention is the major, um, and also by the vaccination, the small farms can be uh, with well spring and the borehole water can be disinfected um, to uh, keep the stock free of this very spring viremia of the carp virus or infectious dropsy of the carp. Then another important disease, fifth important disease that is CCVD. We also know it by the name of the channel catfish virus disease. Uh, this very disease is one of the serious virus diseases and is caused by herpes virus. So the disease is caused by herpes virus and it occurs in fingerlings of less than four month old, less than four month old, four month old fingerlings and it is transmitted through viral uh, water, reproductive cells or fluids. And the symptoms, when we talk about the symptoms, the necrotic lesions in the kidney and liver, spleen and digestive tract, they are the common symptoms. Distension of the stomach, distension of the stomach, anemia, hemorrhages in fins, what we see here, hemorrhages in fins, gills and skin, gills and skin, they are also seen. And then this very, uh, we see that the uh, necrotic lesions because of which this very um, stomach um, seems to be distended. There are necrotic lesions in kidneys and liver, uh, spleen and digestive tract. Incubation period is about 32 to 72 hours at 30 degrees centigrade. And this disease is associated with secondary bacterial infection of Aeromonas hydrophilia and uh, Flaxibacter columnaris. So what does it mean secondary infection? It means that when the disease, uh, when the fish 
is weakened its immune system is weakened by the primary um, you can say um, cause of the infection then other infections may occur in them easily which otherwise uh, the fish can resist such as here in this very case their immune system weakens and the other secondary infections also attack them such as such as uh, such as bacteria such as aeromonas hydrophila and flexibacter columnaris so diagnosis and the control if we talk about the diagnosis and control of this very disease diagnosis is done by the isolation and identification of the virus control measures they are prophylactic in nature segregation from the infected stocks and the use of disinfectants such as chlorine uh, can <clears throat> can reduce the chances of the infection then <clears throat> another important disease it is viral nervous necrosis vnn also known by the name of the vnn that is viral nervous necrosis it is um, it has caused a havoc internationally in both european and the asian sea bass populations so european and asian sea bass populations were um, mostly affected um, on the international platform and that is why it has played a havoc uh, resulting in the great loss of these very sea bass and asian sea bass population european and the asian sea bass populations and um, till this date the disease has been reported in 30 fish species that is this very viral nervous necrosis has been reported from the 30 fish species including freshwater ornamental fishes when we talk about the symptoms um, it has typical characteristics of the neurological abnormalities with clinical symptoms like abnormal swimming abnormal swimming is one of the important you can say symptoms whirling leading to the mass and whirling whirling it means the uh, abrupt uh, moving um, in the in a circular way and it leads to the mass mortalities of the young one and the lesions of the disease develop in brain and retina so brain and retina is also affected and the whirling uh, kind of the behavior is also seen in this very case where the brain and the retina are affected the common clinical signs noticed in the disease include abnormal swimming behavior pale color anorexia anorexia it means um, it means uh, um, loss of appetite and uh, uh, and the, the swim bladder uh, hyperinflation and swim bladder hyperinflation are the important clinical signs of this very disease another important disease uh, caused by virus is infectious salmon anemia it is also known as isa and it is caused by the enveloped rna virus one of the uh, important points and it buds from the plasma membrane after replication disease is observed in atlantic salmon mostly and experimentally it has also been found that the sea trout and the rainbow trout can also be infected by this very virus so it means that the that the uh, sea trout and the rainbow trout are also liable to be infected by this very virus so when we talk about the clinical signs the lethargy lethargy hemorrhagic eyes pale gills distended stomach uh, which is um, which is fluid filled and the liver shows focal necrosis and the petechial hemorrhage petechial hemorrhage it means the hemorrhage in capillaries and the focal necrosis that is the the necrosis which is in focus in liver that is um, in patches and the anemia it is also uh, accompanied by leukopenia leukopenia it is the it is the decrease in the white blood cells um, count so mortality up to 90 percent has been recorded by this very virus it means that it plays a havoc only horizontal transmission has been recorded that is the transmission uh, from the one organism to another um, through the water that is it it is not uh, found to be found to be transmitted through the gametes and the infected live salmon and the inf uh, and infected biological waste from the slaughter are processing plants and the water they are the main sources of the infection of this very virus sea lice may act as vector this is the important point that in this very infection that is isa sea lice may act as vectors and when we when we uh, say the controlling measures 
uh, we can control this disease by the management practices that reduce exposure to the biological material. Another viral disease is salmon pancreas disease or we also called as this pancreas disease. The virus which is responsible for the disease is identified as the toga virus. So toga virus is the cause of the infection of this very disease and, it, and named as a salmon and named salmon pancreas diseased. So it is the disease is caused by the toga virus and it, the disease is named as the salmon pancreas disease or SPVD. Pancreas disease, it is also known as the pancreas disease or PD. It is also known by the name of the PD or SPVD. And it is, it is mostly, it affects the pancreas and it is a sub-acute to the chronic disease which is in the case of Atlantic salmon and the post molds and growers. And the, this very pancreas disease is also found in Europe in rainbow and the brown trout. So it is also found in the rainbow and brown trout in the Europe. And the clinical signs include reduced feeding response. That is the fishes does not feed well. Slow movement. Um, slow movement near water surface. Um, the absence of the fat body. Localized pinpoint hemorrhages. Empty gut and mortality up to 50% is noticed. So clinical signs are mostly the reduced feeding response, slow movement near the water surface, absence of the fat body, localized pinpoint hemorrhages, empty gut um, can be seen in such fishes and mortality can result up to 50% loss. Pancreas disease is mostly diagnosed by the micro microscopical examination, by stained sections, and the, um, the areas which show necrosis and fibrosis with total loss of the SNR cells. So if the uh, histological examination shows the loss of the SNR cells of the exo exocrine pancreas, um, the disease is confirmed that it is the disease which is caused by the toga virus. And this disease is the pancreatic disease or pancreas disease or salmon pancreas disease, virus disease. The pancreas disease has also been linked with a disease known as sleeping disease and it is also known by the name of the sleeping disease, sleeping disease. Uh, and uh, in the, uh, it has been found, also found in the freshwater rainbow trout and it is known to experimentally tra be transmitted by the cohabitation of infective injection of the kidney homogenate. So it is also transmitted by the if the two uh, fishes that is infected and the healthy fish uh, are um, al allowed to st stay together and also it is known to be transmitted by the infective injection of the kidney homogenate. homogenate. Then carp pox, CP known by the name of CP. Carpox is a benign proliferative disease of cyprinids in common carps. And it's, um, it is mostly caused by the virus which is similar to that of the herpes virus. So it is a disease of the common carp. It is a benign proliferative disease in cyprinids. It is characterized by skin proliferation which appears as plaque warty hyperplasia, what you can see on the, on the screen. Um, the plaque-like warty hyperplasia like um, uh, emergence uh, of the epidermis, mineral metabolism may be impaired, which results in the softness of the bones. So the symptoms are characterized by the skin proliferation, which appears as plaque warty hyperplasia in the case of the carp box. And the carrier in this very case is argulus. Argulus, it is a C carp louse. So it is it is a kind of the copypod, uh, which uh, which is called as the fish louse and mostly in this very case it is argulus and also called as the carp louse. It can act as the virus carrier and transmit the virus within the pond population from the one organism to the another. The prevention is the uh, is to, um, is the only measure uh, to prevent this very disease is avoiding inbreeding or by genetic selection methods. 
No chemotherapy exists in this very case, but recovery can be speeded up by liming the ponds. So, liming uh, the ponds uh, is uh, known to have a recovery effect, and the ponds supplied with large volumes of the clear oxygenated water can also can also save the crop from being destroyed. Lymphocystis, the woodcock, woodcock 1904, 1904 identified this very disease. Uh, in fishes it is known by the name of the lymphocystis it is a viral disease that occurs in freshwater brackish water and marine species so all freshwater brackish water and marine species this very disease can be found the symptoms occur as whitish nodules we can see these very whitish nodules on the fins on the head uh, and the body of the fish and along the body of the fish by the enlargement of the connective tissue. These very nodules um, which are formed on the head, body of the fish and it is formed by the enlargement of the connective tissue cells. But are the prophylactic measures that how we can uh, we can stop this very disease from spreading? If the only means, uh, prophylaxis is the only means of the control and affected fish should be destroyed that is um, that should be um, segregated and destroyed to prevent the spread of the virus and the rearing facilities should be disinfected so fish should be destroyed the infected fish should be destroyed and uh, the um, rearing facilities should be disinfected another uh, disease caused by the virus is koi carp herpes virus koi carp is one of the important ornamental fishes being cultured all over the world Koi um, herpes virus or the koi um, carp herpes virus, it causes mass mortality of the common carp and koi fishes in many countries throughout the world. It is based on the pathogenic effect in fish. It is also termed as the carp interstitial nephritis or the gill necrosis virus. So it is also known by the name of the carp interstitial um, carp interstitial, nef uh, interstitial nephritis or it is also known by the name of the uh, gill necrosis carp gill necrosis virus or carp necrosis gill virus so symptoms of this very disease that is lethargy they separate from the shoal and gather at the water inlet that is they do not stay uh, along with the other fishes but try to stay away from those very fishes and mostly at the water inlet or the sides of the pond and gasp the water surface gasp at the water surface because they try to they try to open their mouth and take deep breaths so loss of the equilibrium and disorientation are also the symptoms of this very disease that is um, keeping away from the shoal mostly near the the water inlet or the or the pond sides gasping of the um, on the surface water loss of the equilibrium and disorientation are also the symptoms of this very disease then other symptoms they include the pale discoloration reddening of the skin rough texture loss of epidermis um, over our under production of the mucus on the skin then endophthalmia endophthalmia that is sunken eyes uh, hemorrhages on the skin and um, hemorrhages on the base of the fins base of the fins fin erosion they are also associated with this very infection and currently there is no widely applied control methods for this very koi harpy herpes another uh, important um, viral disease is irido irido virus Iridoviruses have been associated with the several disease and they have resulted in the economic loss in the farmed food fish and ornamental fishes and about 50% mortality have been reported by these very viruses. They are These very iridoviruses are reported from the number of the ornamental fishes such as dwarf goremi, so the um, uh, dwarf goremi, colisa latia, um, the orange chromi, chromide, cichlid, 
atroplus maculatus which is known by the name of atroplus maculatus african uh, lamp uh, lampelai then we call it know it by the name of the aplo uh, kilichthys uh, normani and other marine fishes they are they are um, infected by these this very iridoviruses and diseases diseased fishes they display distinct histopathological signs of the irodovirus infection such as cyst and systemic appearance of inclusion of the body bearing cells and necrosis of the splenocytes and hemopoietic cells so we can see the systemic appearance of the inclusion of the body bearing cells and necrosis of the splenocytes and the hemopoietic cells in these very fishes then episodic uh, hemopoietic necrosis ehn it is caused by the double stranded dna non enveloped irudovirus first important thing caused by double stranded dna virus which is non enveloped irudovirus moribund fish have loss of the equilibrium now moribund means it means those very fishes which are now at the stage of the death that is uh, where in they can die any time we call them as the moribund uh, fish and they depict the loss of the equilibrium flared opercula and may be dark in color fish may have the swollen kidney liver or spleen so uh, kidney may be swollen um, they may be having the swollen liver or spleen and the focal white or yellow lesions can also be seen in them acute focal and multifocal or locally extensive coagulative or liquefactive necrosis of the liver uh, that is hemopoietic kidney and the spleen are common that is acute focal that is that is having the um, at one place or at many places the extensive coagulative or liquefactive necrosis of the liver uh, are also the symptoms of this very disease necrotic lesions may also be seen in heart pancreas gastrointestinal tract gill and sedo branch the basophilic intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies are noticed in the necrotic areas so basophilic intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies are noticed at, uh, at the at the necrotic sites uh, that is in the, in the liver or kidney the virus is found to infect perches rainbow trout and are also reported from the um, from the australia and europe so this very disease is mostly found in australia and europe and in perches and rainbow trout where in the basoph basophilic intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies can be noticed in the um, necrotic area then uh, let us have a little bit a bit of the glimpse about the fish rna viruses this is just the summary what we um, have discussed this um, at this point of view that uh, these very uh, birna virus birna virus we, we are talking about the rna viruses first of all birna virus it is it it has the capability to cause the infectious pancreatic necrosis it is a infectious pancreatic um, necrosis virus it um it is found in marine as well as the fresh water it infects salmonids its disease is um it can cause the necrosis of the internal organs and tissues then we do have the orthomyxovirus it has the capability to infect uh, infect the salmons by uh, and the virus is infectious salmon anemia virus it is mostly marine uh, infects atlantic salmon and causes anemia then paramyxovirus it uh, it is also um, the virus is chinook salmon paramyxovirus marine it causes the host is chinook salmon and no disease is associated with this retrovirus walleye dermal sarcoma virus is the virus belonging to this very category uh, it is found in fresh water and uh, infects walleye pike it causes tumors then we do have the gold shiner rio virus in fresh water golden shiner grass carp it is it causes viremia and necrosis in the case of rio virus it causes it is the virus um, which is called as a channel catfish rio virus and the cham salmon rio virus and infectious hemopoietic necrosis virus the channel catfish rio virus it uh, it uh, has it is found in fresh water it 
the host is channel catfish and it causes transient uh, transient viremia Chum, salmon rio virus it is found in marine and freshwater mostly infect salmonids the focal necrosis of the liver um, is caused by this very disease then infectious hemopoietic necrosis virus it is found in marine and freshwater it infects salmonids and co causes necrosis of the internal organs and tissues rhabdovirus rhabdovirus it, it causes VHS and SVC, the most important category that is rhabdovirus category. It causes VHS, um, that is uh, VHS, that is viral hemorrhagic septicemia belong to this uh, group. And then viral, viral spring viremia of the carp belong to this very group. Marine and freshwater VHS, it is present in marine and freshwater. It causes disease in salmonids, necrosis of the liver kidney and spleen then svc it is in found in fresh water mostly cyprinids it uh, it uh, the disease is viremia swim bladder inflammation and uh, other then dna viruses mostly erodoviruses erodoviruses they belong to the dna viruses the virus is lymphocystis virus it environment is fresh and marine water host are freshwater and marine water fishes and it causes lymphocystis then um, the, uh, the erythrocytic necrosis virus it is also iridovirus it um, it is found in marine environment it causes infection in marine anadromous fishes and the disease is viral erythrocytic necrosis then adenovirus the atlantic cod adenovirus it um, it um, is found in marine environment and the host is atlantic card and mostly it is hyperplastic dermal lesions are caused by this very virus now let us lastly know a little bit about the viral pathogenesis complex series of events that involve virus replication and the host defense responses they finally result in the induction of disease in the host which are collectively known as the viral pathogenesis however the replication of the virus at the primary site of multiplication need not always result in the clinical disease but many a times they they um, they result in a clinical disease the viral pathogenesis starts with the entry of the virus now the firstly it is the entry of the virus in the host and followed by the primary replication and this viral spread in the host the first of all it is the entry of the virus then it is it is the replication of the virus in the host and the lastly it is the viral spread inside the host then the host defense response it would soon be initiated and depending on the effectiveness of the immune response so the virus replication could be prevented and the cell injury could be minimized if the response is abrupt and the response is very good the virus viral infection in the fish could lead to any of the following outcomes now what are those very following outcomes number one no clinical signs no clinical disease and elimination of the virus if the uh, if the immune system is well enough to cope up with the virus there will be no clinical disease and the viral virus will be eliminated number two no clinical disease but establishment of the persistent infection that is carrier state will be present in the the, pers uh, um, the persistent infection uh, will be established but no clinical disease will be there the third there will be the development of the clinical disease and death of the fish can occur then fourthly development of the clinical disease but recovery of the host and elimination of the virus can can uh, can happen and fifth the development of the clinical disease recovery of the host but persistence of the infection that is the clinical disease uh, will develop but the host will recover but the infection will persist in the host so this was all about the important viral diseases um, prevalent in the fishes all over the world i have tried to compile some of the important uh, the viral diseases and uh, hope this will be helpful to you and the next we shall be dealing with the bacterial diseases in fish um, it is my request to like and subscribe my channel bio thank you thank you very much